uh, welcome to these lectures on linear algebra. Uh, so far uh, in the course we have seen that every vector space has a basis, any two bases have the same number of elements or the same cardinality and now we were started we last two lectures we started studying linear maps. I would like to continue this uh, study of linear maps more and basically in these sections I want to use uh, existence of basis to study linear maps more systematically in particular produce more linear maps on a given vector space. So, this section title is linear maps and basis. So, as usual k field arbitrary field and v is a k vector space. In the first lemma, I want to collect the facts, uh, behavior of generating systems, behavior of uh, linear independence and behavior of the basis uh, with respect to a linear map. So, about their images, about their inverse images and so on. So, this I will write the lemma. So, lemma. Let V and W be two k vector spaces x i i in i be a family of vectors in V and f v to w be a k linear map. Then uh, many statements, but they will be very easy to prove. We will see the first statement. If f of x i the images of this given family x i is a generating system for w, then the linear map f is surjective. Two, if uh, f of x i i in i is linearly independent over k, then the original family x i x i i in i is also linearly independent over k of course and the restriction of f of f to the subspace u which is generated by the given family x i is injective. So, the two statement. Let us first finish the proof of these uh, two statements. It is very easy. We want to prove that f is surjective. If, if the images of x i generate w, then we want to prove that f is surjective. So, proof. So, start with w. Let 
or y in y, y in w. To prove f is surjective, we want to write f uh, y. So, what we want is we want to find to find x in v such that f of x is y that is the meaning that it is surjective every y is in the image. So, start with y because we have given that f of x i generates w. So, write then we can write and write y as a linear combination of the images of x i a i f x i i in i with this quotient tuple a i is in the k round bracket i. Remember k round bracket i is a notation for those tuples for which almost all components are 0. So, this sum makes sense and this is the meaning that y is in the subspace generated by f of x i s. Because f is linear a i f x i is same as f of a i x and so therefore, this sum equal to this sum and once again I can take f out because f will also respect the addition. And now we can take this as x and then we got x so that f of x is y. So, this means f is surjective. This was a proof of 1. Proof of 2, what we have given? We have given that the family uh, image family f of x i linearly independent f of x i i in i. This is k linearly independent that is given. And we want to prove that to prove that x i i in i is also k linearly independent. So, take the linear sum which is 0 dependence relation a i x i is 0 i in i where again this coefficient tuple is in k round bracket i. So, almost all are 0 but we want to prove that all i i is a 0. So, to show all a i is a 0. Well, we have this equation given. So, apply f to this applying f, f we get f of this sum is f of 0, but f is linear map. So, f of 0 is 0. On the other hand, this sum is because f is linear, it is a i f of x i, but that means this is a dependence relation among f of x i s, but f of x i s are linearly independent given. So, that implies all a i s are 0. So, that proves 1 and 2. Oh, we still have to prove that f restricted to u, where u is a subspace generated by x i. This is the notation for subspace generated by x i. We want to show that this is injective, but that means we need to check that. So, to prove that f of so we we should prove that kernel of f is 0 that is if u belongs to kernel then u should be 0 but u belong to kernel means f of u is 0 and u is in the subspace generated by x i is 
that means u I can always write it as a linear combination of x i's and again the coefficient tuple is in k power round bracket i. But then when you plug it in here this is f of summation a i x i but this is because f is linear it is summation a i f of x i but this is 0 but f of, f of x i were linearly independent. So, therefore, a i is a 0 for all i in i. So, that proves that f restricted to u which is a map from u to w is injective. This was that assertion. Okay, so, third assertion now, so, so the, the other way if if x i i in i is a generating system for v and f is surjective. Then f of x i i in i is a generating system for w. Fourth one again the similar see the earlier two statements were about the images of the family. These are the uh, these 3 and 4 will be the corresponding statements about the family. So, if x i i in i is k linearly independent family and f is injective then the images the image family f of x i i in i is also k linearly independent so the proofs of this proof of 3 and 4 are similar to those of 1 and 2 so i will skip the proof Okay, so having done this, uh, so let us uh, uh, write the immediate some of the immediate consequences of this. So this one, the next lemma, for example, uh, checks how do we check the given two linear maps are equal or not? For example, so let V in W be k vector spaces and f and g are two linear maps from v to w k linear maps but uh, i want to also remind you uh, remember we have introduced this notation home k v w for the set of linear maps from v to w so, this writing will get shorter if you simply write f comma g belongs to this instead of writing this line and we shall adopt this more often because that will save some, some time as well as space in writing. Now, consider so let look at all those vectors x in v. So, that f and g agree on x f x, f x equal to g x this is a subset of v this 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 is a this subset is a k subspace of v well 
Well, that means that if x is there, y is there, then a x plus b y is also there for all scalars a and b. So, either one checks you can take x in that set, y in that set and a b arbitrary scalars then we just have to look at a x plus b y and evaluate a x plus b y and apply f to this as well as g to this and check that both these are equal because f and g are linear because this side is a f x plus b f y, this side is a g x plus b g y and f x equal to g x and g y f x f y equal to g y. Therefore, this equal, but you can also make it little shorter by noting note that this one is precisely the kernel of the linear map f minus g. Whenever you have two linear maps, we can add them, you can multiply by scalar. So, we have checked that this one is a k, subs k subspace of a bigger space which is w power v. w power v is a k vector space again by component wise addition and component wise scalar multiplication. This v is arbitrary set and the w is a vector space. So, this is the kernel and kernel is always a subspace of V, k subspace of V. So, that was the assertion in this lemma and the particular special case of the assertion is f equal to g if and only if f and g agree on a generating system uh, for for a generating system x i i n i of v. If you can find one generating system of a vector space V where f and g agree then f equal to g. This is because uh, in this case this kernel of f minus g kernel of f minus g this is a subspace and it contains a generating system x i. This generating system is contained in this therefore, a subspace generated by this will be contained in this, but subspace generated by this is precisely the whole V. This is equal to V and this is contained here and if a kernel contains whole V that means, it the map f minus g vanishes on every V that means, f equal to g. This means, f minus g on any V is 0, but this means, f y equal to g V that means, this is true for every v in v. So, that is f equal to g. So, this is one very quick way of testing, quick way of testing whether the two linear maps agree or not, uh, equal or not and that is enough to, to check that, it is enough to check that they agree on a, a generating system. So, in case of a finite dimensional vector space, we can always choose a finite generating system and then the checking f equal to g will involve only finitely many steps. Okay. Now, let us write a theorem. This is very, very important uh, statement. So, this shows that uh, uh, linear map, we can define a linear map on a vector space if we can define it only on a basis. So, let me write in the form of theorem. So, theorem let V and W be k vector spaces and let V i i in i be a k basis of V.
we have proved in the first part of uh, first few lectures that every vector space has a basis may be finite may be infinite but such a basis always exists and let wi i in i be an arbitrary family of vectors in w uh i have taken the arbitrary family but indexed by the same indexing set that's important then there exist a unique k linear map f from v to w such that f of vi equal to wi for all i well we uh, this is we just have to show that on arbitrary v how we can define f so uh, i will uh, so continue this so let me prove this first so what we need to do is if you have any v in v arbitrary then because uh, this vi is a basis of v this v we can write uniquely ai vi because it's a basis where this coefficient tuple ai this is in k power round bracket i and these are unique uniquely determined uniquely determined by v that is because it's a basis basis is very important so when i apply f applying f f to this equation this equality and what do we want the linearity so f of v should be then f of summation ai vi and this obviously we want summation i in i ai f of vi and obviously f of uh, vi uh, demand is it is wi so this is nothing but ai wi and because these ai's are uniquely determined by v they don't depend on the wi's so directly we could have said that define f v f of v by this formula that's a definition of f and it is it makes sense also it is uniquely determined by v so that gives f and by very fact that we have checked these two equality root this equality in between that show that this f is a unique map with this condition the condition is this once you know this then the map is unique okay so i want to note what more property this this unique map f has which has this which is this condition so uh, let me write so moreover the above unique map f v to w with f of vi equal to wi for all i in i have the following properties okay one f is surjective how do we test if is this given this unique map is surjective or not that is if and only if wi i in i is a generating system for w okay 
this is very easy. If f is surjective, of course, uh, this has to generate because uh, surjective means every w is coming from some v. So, this means w and w, there exist v with f of v equal to w, but f of v is v is in v is in v. So, v we can write as a uh, unique linear combination of v i a i v i where with this a i tuple is in k round bracket i that is because v i is a basis and because f is linear this is nothing but summation a i f of v i i in i, but the f of v i is w w i. So, this is nothing but summation a i w i. So, this means every every w in w we have wrote as a com linear combination of these w i's. That means, the w i's generate w. So, we have proved this assertion this way. We are assuming it is surjective, we have proved it is a generating system for w. Conversely, If I uh, if I have given that uh, W i is a generating system for W, then I want to prove it is surjective. But if W i is a generating system for W means W is the smallest subspace or W is a subspace generated by W i means this, but this is same as i in i k f v i because W i is f of v i, but this is same as this is contained in f of I can take the uh, the sum inside and uh, v i because f is linear every element here is a combination and that finite combination you can take f out, but this is contained in f of v b this is equal to f of v because this v i is the basis but f of v is contained in w, you see w is contained in w, but so all these must be equal because w all these equalities are happening in a big space w. So, that implies uh, that implies w equal to f of v that is f is surjective. that was uh, proof of this one. I still have two more properties. So, they will be similar. So, I will skip the proof. So, now f is surjective, now f is injective. f is injective equivalent to saying the family w i i in i is k linearly independent. Remember this w is nothing but image of a basis v i. So, I will skip the proof of this, this is similar to that of 1 and then combine 1 and 2. So, f is bijective, injective and surjective is bijective if and only if and linear independence and the generating system is a basis. So, that is w i i in i is a k basis of w. So, uh, that means, whenever we want to check the map is uh, given linear map is bijective, we need to check that a basis some basis of v, the image of some basis of v is a basis of w then we can say that the map is bijective. I will soon apply this in a example. So, let me write example. So, example. So, the problem I want to deal in this example is given v and w two finite dimensional finite dimensional 
k vector spaces. Then we have these vector space home k v w. I want to compute the dimension of this. This is what I want to do. So, remember this home k v w is a subspace of w power v. This is too big subspace. So, this is not even finite dimensional. So, if you and whether this is finite dimensional or not, it is not clear from this inclusion. So, we want to find a better, better way to embed this in a smaller vector space so that we can compute the dimension. So, look at consider the map, the map, this map is f, uh, this map I want to call it phi. This is a map from home k v w to w power i. What is i? I first choose a basis of v. So, let v i i in i be a basis, be a k basis of v. And now, because we are assuming v is finite dimensional, the cardinality of i has to be some no natural number n. That means, the i is a set which has exactly n elements. We may also take 1 to n or now you can call it i 1 to i n the elements of i. This map capital phi is a map which so take any linear map from v to w and where should I map? I should map it to the i tuple which has entries in w. So, that i tuple is nothing but the values of v i uh, values of f at v i. So, f of v i. This is obviously an element in w power i and we do not need to write a round bracket here because i is a finite set. So, this is this is a set of all i tuples with coordinates in w. So, this is a typical. Now, I want to check that this map is bijective. If I check the map is bijective, then the dimension of this vector space is uh, bijective and also want to check k linear. If I check that, then the dimension of this will be equal to dimension of this, but w power i is nothing but w cross w cross 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 this is a product mod i times. because uh, functions from i to w you can think a tuples and how many how many coordinates as many as the set as i has elements so this is this so therefore the dimension of this what we will get is dimension of the vector space home k v w will be equal to dimension of the product v w cross w cross w how many times mod i times. But dimension of the product is the sum, dimension of the product is sum how many times i times. So, this is nothing but mod i times the dimension of k, a dimension of w which is and this mod i is the dimension of w. So, this is dimension v times dimension of w. So, we get a nice formula dimension of the home dim, dimension of the home this dimension equal to this dimension. Okay, so, what is left now? Let us let me just go back and uh, show you what is left is uh, not uh, very difficult to check. We want to check this map is k linear and this map is bijective. So, all that we have to do is you take any combination like this a f plus b g and where does this go under this map? This goes to a f of v f of v i plus b g of v i 
but this is same as the image of A f and image of so this is same as A f of V i plus B G of V i and this is this one is same as A phi of f and this one is same as B phi of G and this is this is phi of A f plus B G. So, that checks that this map phi is linear. Now, to check bijectivity we have to show that every element here is coming from a linear map that is surjectivity and the injectivity that if f goes f and g goes to the same tuple then f equal to g, but that is precisely what we have proved in earlier two statements f equal to g if and only if they agree on a basis and v i is a basis. And similarly that given any w i we can always find a, a linear map f unique. So, that f of v i is precisely the given family w i. So, that completes the proof of this example completely and we will take a break and then continue after the break. Thank you.